name's Adrienne Joseph. I'm a fourth year medical student and a former research fellow of Dr. Benjamin Chong, a dermatologist who researches how lupus affects the skin here at the University of Texas Southwestern. So when lupus affects the skin, we call this cutaneous lupus. And there are several subtypes of cutaneous lupus. One of the more commonly known subtypes of cutaneous lupus is called acute cutaneous lupus. And this is the classic butterfly or malar rash that presents on the cheeks and nose. Acute cutaneous lupus, however, may also present on other sun exposed areas of the body as well. And this rash typically lasts from days to weeks. Subacute cutaneous lupus is another form of skin lupus that is typically found on sun exposed areas of the body. This typically appears as symmetric, scaly, ring like, or psoriasis like lesions. And these lesions typically last from weeks to months. Medications have been implicated in contributing to subacute cutaneous lupus. So if you are diagnosed with this form of skin lupus, it's important to discuss the medications that you're on with your doctor. The last form of cutaneous lupus is called chronic cutaneous lupus. And discoid lupus is the most common form of chronic cutaneous lupus. Discoid lupus also disproportionately affects black patients. Discoid lupus lesions are typically found on the scalp, ears, and face and typically resolves with scarring as well as light and dark spots on the skin, which may be long-term. So because prior research has shown that black patients more commonly have discoid lupus and that black patients are more likely to suffer from skin damage due to discoid lupus lesions, our research group was interested in how black patients differentially present with discoid lupus. And we did this with the overall goal of further understanding how discoid lupus affects black patients, but to also help further guide clinicians when making recommendations to black patients with discoid lupus. So we found that when compared to non-Black patients, Black patients with discoid lupus were more likely to have lesions on the scalp and ears, and Black patients with discoid lupus were more likely to have skin pigment alterations, such as dark spots or light spots, as well as scarring alopecia, which is permanent hair loss. We hope that future studies can further explore which factors are contributing to these differences. So these findings also have important implications for doctors and patients. Doctors can examine patients' skin and scalp to help with early initiation of treatment for these lesions. Doctors can also counsel patients on sun protection, as well as gentle hair care practices in order to further reduce damage to the skin and scalp. And patients can discuss skin and hair concerns with their doctors early on to help minimize damage due to discoid lupus lesions. Thank you.